Do you believe that we can go back in time? Let's see. Just listen to the story after closing your eyes and then we shall discuss the vocabulary. The Third Level by Jack Finney is an account of a strange experience in the life of a 31-year-old man named Charlie who is also the narrator of the story. The narrator's psychiatrist friend Sam, just like everybody else, did not believe him. According to him, the experience he had was just a waking dream wish fulfillment which means a daydream in simple words. He thought that Charlie had this experience due to the unhappiness in his life. Charlie's wife Louisa was very upset when she heard Sam's diagnosis. Even his friends agreed with Sam and said that the narrator was really unhappy in his life and because of this he collected stamps to do something to make himself happy. They called it his temporary refuge from reality which means an escape from the real world for some time to enter a world of one's own with the help of a hobby. But Charlie believed that they were wrong since even his grandfather who had a very peaceful life collected stamps and he just added more stamps to his grandfather's collection because he liked doing it. Now let's see what exactly this experience was. So one night during the previous summer, Charlie was at the Grand Central Station after leaving his office later than usual. He could not wait to get uptown to his apartment. Uptown means a very decent residential area of a town or city. He chose the subway which means an underground railway station or a tunnel under the road for pedestrians. Pedestrians means the people who walk to reach places. He decided to take the subway as it was faster than going by bus. That night, Charlie was wearing a tan gabardine suit and a straw hat with a fancy band. Tan is a very faded shade of brown color and gabardine is a type of cloth which is smooth and twill woven which means the pattern of the threads are diagonal parallel. Straw means dried yellow stalks of grain. Now Charlie was not really running away from reality. He just wanted to reach home to his wife Louisa as fast as possible. The Grand Central Station is so big that to Charlie it seemed like a tree which kept growing and pushing out new corridors and staircases like roots. For many people it was a way of escape from life but not for Charlie. Now the first level of the station was for the trains which stopped at the main stations of the city and the second level was for the suburban trains. A suburb is a locality on the outskirts which means borders of a city or town. It is away from the city centre. Charlie had often got lost at the Grand Central Station. Once he came out in the lobby of the Roosevelt Hotel and at another time he reached an office building while walking through a station tunnel. All this means that the Grand Central was very big and confusing. Now that night Charlie started walking down a corridor on the left and after climbing down some stairs he came out on the third level at the Grand Central Station. Now this third level did not exist on the map. Nobody believed it was there except Charlie who was actually there at least according to him. There was nobody over there. At first he thought it was the second level but after seeing the ticket windows, the train gates, the old fashioned wooden information booth and a small room, he understood that that was not the second level. The man sitting in the information booth or box wore a green eye shade. Eye shade means glasses. It's a pair of glasses to protect eyes from light. He wore long black sleeve protectors. The lights around Charlie were blinking which means flickering. This was because the light was coming from open flame gas lights. They were not modern electric lights. Charlie saw some brass spittoons which are um, bowls used for spitting. He saw a man dressed up in a very old-fashioned way. He had a big black handlebar moustache 
and he was checking his gold pocket watch to see the time. Even the other people on the third level were dressed as if they were from the 1890s. They had sideburns and fancy moustaches. And when Charlie saw a very small curries and ivies train with a funnel-shaped stack, uh, which means chimney, he understood that he was in some other year of the past. He became fully convinced when he saw a newspaper called The World, which used to be published years ago. The date was June 11, 1894 on the newspaper. And the front, front page said something about President Cleveland, who was dead. Charlie had seen that same front page in some public library files. He thought of buying two one-way tickets to Galesburg, Illinois, one for him and one for his wife, Louisa, so that they could both travel and see the Galesburg of 1894, when there was a lot of peace and not a single world war had taken place. The town looked more beautiful in those days, but when he tried to buy the tickets, the clerk glanced, means took a look at Charlie's modern day clothes and saw that even Charlie's money did not look like the money they used in 1894. He said Charlie was trying to skin, means cheat him. When Charlie heard this, he thought he might get arrested, so he got out fast from there and he went back from the same way he had come to the third level. But the next day he... Uh, went to the bank to withdraw almost all his money to get the old style currency. His psychiatrist friend was worried when he did that. He thought Charlie was really going mad. Charlie had to pay a premium amount so that he got only $200 after giving $300 to the coin dealer. But when he tried to find the third level of the Grand Central Station again, he could not find it. No matter how many times he tried, he even told his wife about this, who tried to stop him. Finally, Charlie gave up. He again got busy with his stamp collection. Now, a first day cover is an envelope used by stamp collectors to paste a new stamp on the same day it is released in the market. It is to prove the date of the day that stamp is issued. The envelope contains only a blank page. Now, one day while going through his collection, Charlie found an envelope that was never there in the collection before. The date was July 18, 1894. What happened was Charlie's psychiatrist friend, Sam, had found the third level just like Charlie had. He had already bought the old style currency for $800 from the coin store and tried to find the mysterious third level of the Grand Central Station, maybe to prove Charlie wrong. But uh, he turned out right. He had always wanted to see the old Galesburg after hearing about it from Charlie who used to go to school there. He also wanted to go back to his old business of brains. So after reaching the third level, he had travelled back in time in the year 1894, quite unbelievable, and he went to Galesburg to start his hay, feed and grain business, which was easy for him with the amount he had taken with him from the future. He then wrote a letter to Charlie and sent it to Charlie's grandfather who was uh, alive in that year. So that night when Charlie was going through his stamp collection, he found a first day cover which had magically come there. He had never seen that cover in the collection before. It came after Sam went back in time and posted it. The letter was sealed because nobody opens first day covers as they only contain blank pages. But uh, since this cover had never been in the collection before, Charlie opened it and was surprised to find a letter which started with Dear Charlie. Sam had written about his experience and said that Charlie and Louisa should keep looking for the third level as he was having a great time in the year 1894. He posted the letter after there for two weeks. So finally Charlie and his wife came to know that Charlie was not actually mad there was a mysterious third level at the Grand Central Station after all. And um, what do you think? Can this be true? Can we really travel back in time? Or was Charlie really mad and he had been dreaming? Or should I say hallucinating? Let's discuss the vocabulary. The first examples are from the lesson. Waking dream wish fulfillment. To see 
what we wish or a daydream i told him about the third level at grand central station and he said it was a waking dream wish fulfillment my little brother thinks he's a superhero i told him it is his waking dream wish fulfillment now the second example is given by me for you so that you understand this better insecurity it means lack of confidence he explained that he meant the modern world is full of insecurity your he means sam uh, charlie's psychiatrist friend insecurity is common during teenage refuge means a place or situation providing safety or shelter my grandfather didn't need any refuge from reality after the war they took refuge in the neighboring countries corridor means a long passage in a building i'm always bumping into new doorways and stairs and corridors running in the corridors is dangerous you might bump into somebody and get hurt duck it also means the bird but here it means to bend one's neck down to avoid an accident you can see in the picture then i walk down another flight flight means the flight of stairs to the second level where the suburban trains leave from ducked into an arched doorway heading for the subway and got lost the policeman ducked to avoid the bullet shot by the thief arched doorway a doorway with a curve at the top the first example is given above below duck spanish homes generally have arched doorways sleeve protector a garment worn to protect the arms the man in the booth wore a green eye shade and long black sleeve protectors many bike riders wear sleeve protectors although they look modern these days open flame gas lights a lamp which is lighted with the help of gas the lights were dim and sort of flickering then i saw why they were open flame gas lights open flame open flame gas lights were used in the olden days to light up streets glint it means to shine there were brass spittoons on the floor and across the station a glint of light caught my eye a man was pulling a gold watch from his vest pocket at night the glints of light look beautiful on the surface of the lake frown to furrow one's eyebrows he snapped open the cover glanced at his watch and frowned i frowned when i saw how rudely he spoke to his father handlebar mustache there are two spellings of mustache both are correct a wide thick mustache with the end curving slightly upwards he wore a derby hat a black four button suit with tiny lapels and he had a big black handlebar mustache The village headman had a white handlebar mustache, derby hat, a felt material hat that is round and hard with a narrow brim. The first example is as above, as given above. Derby hats are spherical from the top, as we can see in the picture. Angling left means fishing or turning left here. The corridor. i was in began angling left and slanting downward and i thought that was wrong but i kept on walking they angled the lights towards the stage before the camera started vest pocket the pocket of a waistcoat the arrow seems out of place a man was pulling a gold watch from his vest pocket vest pockets are mainly meant for pocket watches stack here it means chimney i caught a glimpse of a locomotive that means a train a very small courier and i means locomotive with a funnel shaped stack the stack is choked so we need to clean it glimpse a sight visible for a very short time the first example is given below the word stack we only caught a glimpse of the president because there was a lot of crowd sideburns a strip of hair grown by a man down each side of the face in front of his ears i never saw so many beards sideburns and fancy mustaches in my life 
these days men keep short side burns leg of mutton sleeves these sleeves are puffed at the top as you can see in the picture a woman walked in through the train gate she wore a dress with leg of mutton sleeves leg of mutton sleeves look like legs of a butchered goat fireflies an insect which glows in the dark and in 1894 summer evenings were twice as long and people sat out on their lawns and the men smoking cigars and talking quietly the women waving palm leaf fans with the fireflies all around in a peaceful world fireflies are uncommon in cities funnel shaped wide at the top and narrow at the bottom I caught a glimpse of a locomotive a very a very small Korean IV's locomotive with a funnel shaped stack the vase on the table is funnel shaped palm leaf fan a fan shaped like a palm leaf and in 1894 summer evenings were twice as long and people sat out on their lawns the men smoking cigars and talking quietly the women waving palm leaf fans my craft teacher taught me to make palm leaf fans with old newspapers figure here it's the verb it means to think to guess to calculate here it means to calculate the clock figured the fare i couldn't figure why everybody was running towards the sports ground i had no idea there was a match going on fussing means worrying or busying oneself in a restless way because one night were fussing with my stamp collection i found one night before the picnic my mother was fussing with my backpack so that i had everything necessary feed it's food for domestic animals that ought to set him up in a nice little hay feed and grain business he always said that's what he really wished he could do and he certainly can't go back to his old business now here he means sam The milkman ordered eight sacks of feed for his cows. Find the meanings of the following words and frame sentences. Escape, locomotive, claimed, wander, tan, gabardine, suburb, staircase, probably, soul, eye shade, flickering, spittoons, glanced. hat band skin staring nodded suspected hey thank you